Jesus uh, continued to speak to the disciples in parables. And he said, uh, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went away to buy it, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went with him into the, the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. And Jesus said, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is God's story, our story. Thanks be to God. I'm getting married in the morning, spruced up and looking in me prime. Pull out the stopper, let's have a whopper. Get me to the church, get me to the church. Help me with a big ending here. For Pete's sake, get me to the church on time. Some of you know that. The, uh, office team, we got all these youngsters that work around here, and I don't think they quite knew the title to that. I said, they said, what's the title of the sermon? I said, get me to the church on time. I typed it into the email, and they corrected my grammar, get me to church on time, or something, I don't know. They no doubt are unfamiliar with Pygmalion, my fair lady. I'm fond of the uh, Rex Harrison version myself, but anyway. We are back at a wedding on this uh, get me to the church on time. Jesus said, what? Sunday? And uh, back at a wedding, just like we were last week, it reminds us that for God, and we see this throughout the Bible, there are many references to weddings, wedding banquets, marriage, as a way to experience our relationship with God, or in other words, that uh, the idea of two people uh, fully offering themselves for one another uh, is the metaphor for our relationship with God. This eternal bond, there's so many references in the Bible and um, and today, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps to meet the groom. I want you to notice also that we are getting towards the end of this part of God's story in the Bible. Since Advent, our focus has been on the life of Jesus naturally with the uh, birth of Jesus at Christmas at the end of Advent and then the beginning of his ministry these many weeks to Easter have all been stories in the Bible from his life specifically the Gospel of Matthew Matthew's story uh, of Jesus earthly life we're getting towards the end of Matthew the 25th chapter which naturally uh, has us thinking about the end of his earthly life and, for Matthew, the end of life itself, the end times, the, um, the final days, the end of the age, judgment day. We um, 
We've taken that old children's song and softened it a bit, not the least of which with tacos and uh, whatever else, but uh, some of us remember the original words, give me oil for my lamp, keep it burning, 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 keep it burning till the judgment day was uh, what that song, that old folk song came out years ago saying. The kingdom of heaven is like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps to meet the groom. In, um, in Jesus' time, all of the arrangements for uh, a couple to be married legally were taken care of before the day. The, uh, the wedding day itself was a formality and uh, it featured the wedding banquet, which as we learned last Sunday, was for God a, an image of this eternal celebration. The kingdom of heaven is like a father who gave a banquet for his son. Remember last Sunday? And now today Jesus said it's like ten bridesmaids who awaited the arrival of the groom. Because in Jesus' day, on the, on the day of the wedding, uh, the, the groom would arrive from his home and take the bride to their new home and their life together. And that was the beginning. And we have these um, images. So clearly, as we think about the end of time and the beginning of our life eternally with God, God is the groom. And uh, we are the bridesmaids. Have you thought about yourself as a bridesmaid lately? But this is how the uh, church doctrinally has referenced this for centuries. The church is the bride of Christ. As the Bible shows in so many uh, examples for us to get our head around this, this union eternally with God. The excitement, the promise of eternal joy in the kingdom itself. It's about to begin here at the end of Matthew. But now as the, the bridesmaids wait on the groom, the groom is late. And the church, since the time of Jesus, has been asking this question over and over. When is God going to come again? Jesus promised that he would come again, and, and the church eagerly awaited for the longest time. When is he going to come? And, and Jesus himself tells us in this story that nobody knows the day or the hour when he will come. And so... He, Representing that, the bridesmaids are waiting for this groom for the eternal wedding feast to begin. It says, uh, quite interestingly, that uh, as the groom is delayed, it's, it gets messy. I remember a wedding once that I was presiding at. The groom was 45 minutes late. The best man never showed up. We waited for the groom but not for the best man. They're waiting, and um, it, gets, it gets messy because um, some of them are prepared, some of the brides are prepared, some of them are not, with enough oil for their lamps waiting in the night, and all of them fall asleep, the Bible says. It's pretty clear what the, uh, the point of this story is. Are we prepared for God's coming? Are we ready for heaven? If we are wise, we, um, we've got plenty of oil. We're prepared. We planned ahead. But as it turns out, um, these, some of the bridesmaids are not so sharp, not so ready to go. And um, 
as it turns out, if we're really wise, we are um, troubled by what unfolds in the rest of this story about heaven. It's, uh, it's quite troubling. I mean, after all, these bridesmaids say to the other bridesmaids, share with us. And they say, no. Can, can you really say in church, if someone asks you to share, no? <laughs> no, you can't. I mean, it's just a little bit, right? Just give me a little. Because God will honor a little, right? The smallest amount. Uh, the grain of a mustard seed is enough, isn't it? How, how can it be? Let us in, the, the bridesmaids cry to the groom when he arrives. At, and, and they're banging on the gates of heaven. Let us in. Is it possible that God would say no? Most troubling of all, I do not know you. I do not know you. Could that really happen? That God would say this, that Jesus would close the door to one who has waited for this moment. It, uh, it, the story hurts if we're wise. It's disturbing. And we are left with a realization that, yes, God can say no. That Jesus can close the door. But let's go deeper into the Bible. Deeper into God's story, deeper into our story. The, the truth of the reality of our existence is that God is always present. God is always coming. It's we who are not present. We who are not ready. We begin our, our worship sending the children out for a children's church. And, and uh, we started with that time of being present before God because being present is the key to all spirituality. And we're not present. We're mostly somewhere else. Isn't it true? We get in our busy life and we're going through the motions. And our lives are brought into a, a state of unawareness. We're not present with each other, let alone God. We're not ready. And if, if we take this story out of the context of the whole Bible, if we take this story alone, we're left in a pretty bad place. I mean, the marriage itself is in trouble. The Bible simply threatens people into love. Which is impossible. You, you can't love somebody with your whole heart and mind and soul just because you're afraid.
But love is possible if we go deeper and we're honest. Honest with ourselves. Honest about how unready we are. And we realize that we're coming to the end of the earthly story in the 25th Matthew chapter of Matthew and we turn the page to the 26th chapter and we arrive at Holy Week. And the story of God, now that God's gotten our attention about how important it is to be ready. How important it is to be alert to the coming of the groom. It continues and, and as the story goes, We'll remember that on the night he was betrayed, when Jesus took the cup and, and looked at the disciples, he said, this is my body broken for you, my blood shed for you. And um, the experience of receiving him as our Savior is uh, followed up when they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And what happens there in the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus urges and implores the disciples, stay with me, pray with me. But there on the night when he's betrayed in Gethsemane, the disciples cannot stay awake. And they go from there to the judgment hall. Jesus is arrested. And um, as they proceed there, Peter is followed at a distance and he's out in the courtyard. Jesus is on trial before Pontius Pilate and for the first time in the Bible he acknowledges that he's the Son of God. Are you the Son of God? Pilate says. Jesus said, I am. Even as Jesus, for the first time, is acknowledging in a public testimony who he is. Peter's out in the courtyard, and three times somebody says to him, you're one of them. He says, I'm not. You're a Galilean, another person says. I'm not. And finally, I know that you're one of his followers, and that's when Jesus, that's when Peter says, Those words that sound strangely familiar to the story today. I do not know that man. It's a story of our life. We who are, in some regard, not ready, not prepared. We who struggle in our relationships who realize that we're at the mercy of God. We're dependent on God. This is God's wedding party. And it's made possible only by the death and the resurrection of His Son in our own death and our own resurrection. We are walking together with Jesus in Lent. Let us offer ourselves completely to the one and only who holds the key, who can open the door.